Hey guys, what's up? It's Z Michael. I'm here in 1987. There's not going to be an intro today because last time I used the trailer of the Order 1886, um, my, that, which was for my anticipated games of the year video, it didn't get flagged, but it basically got claimed. There's a copyright claim, and I don't want to deal with that stuff today with this video. Hopefully, I'll try to edit the video enough. So there won't be any claims for this video. Hopefully you guys watch it because I posted a 45 minute video footage of me playing the first 45 minutes of playing the Order 1886 and that got claimed to the point where some countries couldn't even watch it. So I know that I didn't want I didn't want you guys to suffer because of that. So I took that video down. Um But uh guys, there's no intro well uh, like there's no intro like you seen for Evolve, um Captain Toad, um not Super Smash Brothers, yes. Um, there's not gonna be no introduction like that. It's just gonna be I'm just gonna be talking for this video because I don't want to deal with any scenarios. So that's just it, and that's just in this introduction. Hopefully you guys will enjoy this video. Actually, please like this video, comment below, subscribe. I already said I want to say at the end of this video already, so you guys already know the outcome. So guys, enjoy the video. Uh, check out my other videos like Evolve review. Um, I just put that. Out. I put a lot of work into that. I put like two or three hours in that video. I actually put like a lot of hours in all my videos. To be honest, I mean, it's like a struggle at times. But um, guys, just check, like this video, share this video, and just watch it and make sure uh you actually send this to people so they can see my personal opinion about the game. And hopefully you guys can actually comment below and tell me your personal opinions as well. All right, all right. Let's get this show on the road. Hello guys, what's up? It's the Michael M here in 1997. Here to give you guys a good overview of the Order 1886. Yep, I picked this PS4 game exclusive up. And here I am reviewing it for you guys. Now, I've been looking forward to this game for a while. It's one of the most anticipated games of the year. It was like number 8, I believe, on my list. Maybe number 9. You can check it out on my video. Um, but, more importantly, I was looking forward to this game as it was by a developer, Ready at Dawn's... Uh, a, a title and they had a great uh, history in the past you know with games like Okami and the God of War PSP titles like Ghost of Sparta and Chains of Olympus and for the PS4 exclusive there's a lot of hype about, around it as it's ambitiously cinematic and like Entertainment Weekly says it's a crazily ambitious and highly cinematic game but does it deliver on its promises of being a satisfying game with that cinematic quality um overall um the Order 186 does not fulfill on all its promises, but there is still something there for you guys to try out if you're looking for it. So let's get into the story, which is one of the highest part highlights of the game, actually. The story takes um, takes place in the year 1886, where it actually just, this game actually decides to mix like like in mythology from Underworld and history of the 1880s, where it basically evolves around um, a group called the Order, who was originated by King Arthur, who wanted to stop the Lycans from killing people, which are also known as half-breeds, who kill people, and the, and the King's Order's job is to prevent those killings from actually happening. It's up to basically a, a, a long decade battle war, decades of war, between the Lycan half-breeds and the human order so knights, as they're called. And the game takes place in 1886, and you play as protagonist Sir Galahad, who has been a knight for uh, decades now. And he basically, and his group of soldiers, like Sir Percival, Lafayette, and um, new uh, so, uh, knight, uh, Elaine, who is basically has to um, stop a rebellion who is causing more problems for both the Lycans and the knight order, to cause issues which starts an act of terrorism and chaos throughout the city. Centuries have passed, but our order has remained steadfast in its sacred mission to preserve the balance between man and half-breed. <sighs> Such was the quest of our founder, King Arthur. May his name be forever resplendent. Is it true? Did the Lord Chancellor fight by Arthur's side? That is the legend. Today, that balance is threatened with grave upset by a new contagion. The rebellion. This basically is Sir Galahad trying to stop the Lycan attack from happening, while also trying to stop the terrorists of the rebellion's uh, terrorist attacks. And story, and I really do like the theme here. The setting here is downright amazing. The idea of having a game in the 1880s, but also have like this future, not future, but technological advancement that you don't really see is really a unique thing. And this is done by its actual setting, and it's also 
um, kind of cute and realistic historical figures like Nikola Tesla is in the game and he plays this kind of um, guy who crafts uh, gadgets and weapons for your for the protagonist and it's kind of cool how it kind of feels like he's not an entirely buff up character or different but he does um, stay true to his kind of character who he really is which is the amazing thing it's kind of cool to see Nikola Tesla be part of the order you know and the story here is actually really well done here. The, I, the, the setting and the mythology behind the game and its storytelling is really amazing. It has a lot of backstory. Even though they don't really indulge that deep into it, it's amazing as you can just like think of many ideas of what the Order has done, what historical figures has joined the Order, and who were also likens as were there any like um, main member league uh important people in history who are lichens or are these important people also orders of the knights it's all amazing as these ideas just bounce off my head like crazy and it's just amazing how the developers ready at dawn has crafted a story and a world just so unique it feels just outstanding that the, the, that's what makes this story amazing is its atmosphere its setting and its mythology which is downright just smart mythologically just like not precise, but it does feel just unique, and it doesn't, and it feels unexpected for a game, as most games are just like military shooters. This feels unique, differently, and I'll go into that when it comes to gameplay. But the, the story does have some great moments in it, and there's some unexpected moments that you won't see coming, and some twists and turns that even I didn't expect to see, and I basically can predict. Uh, twist and turn happening from a mile away, but I didn't see 70s, which is really unique. Um, even if the entire game isn't fully satisfying, the story here is actually one of the best parts of the order. Now let's get into the gameplay, which I have a few notes over there. Now the Order 186 is a third person shooter with some basic third person mechanics. It's simple aiming, you're shooting, you get into cover, you take cover, you, you, you don't kill, you don't like get shot to death, you shoot enemies, and you progress. It's okay. Galahad, the rebels are in retreat. Oh, shit, that was awesome. and controls you've always had in games and what's co it's cool about this is even though it feels like stuff we played over and over again in games over and over it does feel unique as some of the weapons you get in the game are downright beautiful or just like not beautiful but unique and innovative in some ways for example you start off with like a normal pistol and then you'll get like a two-shot uh, revolver which shoots two bullets at the same time or you can even get um, an assault rifle with an air blast in it. Or and then you get your normal guns, like you get your normal sniper rifle, you get your normal pistol, your normal shotgun. And then you get unique weapons like this um, arc gun, which is a lightning gun that shoots lightning on your enemies. And these cause your enemies' body parts to like blow up in, in gory fashion. Like um, a head will explode, or part of their arm will just fly off into this bloody anarchy. It's downright amazing some of these weapons have. Um, there's also a pen of the thermite rifle, which shoots a thermite, you shoot a flare at the area where you shot the thermite at, it blow it creates like a fire like fireworks but like burns people and kills people in the process of that. Understood. Stay on the Enemies in the distance. 
have unique qualities behind it and they all feel great to use. Not once did a weapon feel unbalanced or, or unsatisfying to use. It's even a bazooka like weapon which shoots like three bazookas at once. It's kind of like a, like a like zoom explosion and the sound design behind that is actually really well done there and it really does pay off for that for the sound design. It's it's so Galahad, the Knight Commander has requested that you are All personnel, please remain clear of the east end of Westminster Bridge. We are witnessing heavy artillery fire at the moment. To weapons. However, the fact is, even though those weapons are amazing to use, you, the developers sometimes never give you enough moments to actually use it. Like for example, the bazooka I talk about with like, the explosion which you hold three bazookas at once is actually only used in one section. While other weapons like the thermal rifle is used only for certain scenarios when it's required, not for you to use it whenever you want to. Which feels kind of disappointing, as those weapons are cool, and this game's mythology and its story is also amazing as well. It's a shame, then, that you can't really uh, fully look at the world. A way to talk about the order is basically saying it's a game to look at that has beautiful details, but you can't touch the details, or you can't really fully invest yourself into it. You can't look, every under, you can't look under every rock and every stone. Which is a real shame, as this game has some some amazing graphics. Actually, some of the best graphics I have seen so far as of now. Maybe other titles like Uncharted or Bloodborne will show you even better graphics. But for now, Blood The Order eighteen eighty six is a visually beautiful game. Outstanding as well. It's animations. It's it's motion blur when your, your character moves and you see the quality of the. Of the cloths they have on, and the armor they wear, the, the knights, and the lichens themselves when they transform is amazing. And it's the details and the animations is re really sells it. Also, with the amazing voice acting and motion capture behind it, you get some really quality, um, qual quality. You get really good quality. Also, back to gameplay. There's it. It like I said, um, the weapons. Even though you can't use, you don't get a lot of moments to use them. They still are satisfying to use. Also, the develop some reviews have been claimed about the letterbox styling of the game, which is really just not like worth really complaining about. Cause I like the letterbox styling of the game. If you don't know what I'm talking about, um, it's basically this. Hang on. Back to the point. Um, the letterbox styling. You ever go to the movie theater? You always notice those two uh, bars, one on top and one on bottom. That's basically what letterbox styling is, and that transfers to games. For example, the Evil Within. If you guys saw my Evil Within review, you would notice that that game had a letterbox styling as well. You wouldn't be able to stretch the screen out for its full quality on TV, but it still looks good. It was made to have a cinematic movie quality like type of feel to it, and I like that for the Order 1886. It tries to be a highly cinematic game, yes, and it does its best parts. While you may not be able to see all your enemies over cover, you can always move the camera, which is really simple to do, not that hard to do. So, so those complaining about the letterbox styling of the game, shut up, please, just stop it. I, I, it's really annoying to hear people complain about little stupid things rather than talk about the biggest issues out there. Uh, well, they do talk about it, they just over complain about it too much, in my personal opinion. For example, the developers also thought of a, it was a great idea to use quick time events, which I think is fine. I mean, quick time events isn't the best thing of all time, but it's no horrible, like, boring thing to do. I mean, I like quick time events. I like The Walking Dead and The Wolf Among Us as quick time events because it made me feel like I was I was directing a film. I was in control. 
even though if you miss a quick time event here or there, you might just be end up dead and restart. But the quick time events are also for things as like simple as opening a door or um, flipping a paper over or like moving a, a wheel so you can get something out of your way. And these quick time events aren't that ma are, are uh, there's a lot of quick time events actually, and I feel the shame as it kind of makes a stop and go type of experience. Like Metal Gear Solid has suffered from this type of thing as well. People said it's more cutscenes than gameplay, but the order it takes like, takes that a little bit too far as there's way too many cutscenes. Not too many cutscenes, but the cutscenes just extend themselves way too long to the point where it's stretched out. And the moment you get to play, when it comes to shooting your enemies down, is fun, but you don't get that much momentum behind it. Um, I mean, for example, Lycan Battles, what the, I mean, a game, that was part of the game, I mean, Lycan Battles, that's like the mythology, you expect there to be tons of Lycan Battles in that game. Unfortunately, the developers disappoint that by only having you fight Lycans two to four times maximum throughout the entire experience of the game. These battles are for often shootouts where you have to defend yourself in a corner or they're all charging you in hiding form, like those like um, those creepy crawlies from Dead Space 2. I think all of them are escaping. Are you near his location? I'm doing this though! It may take me some time to reach him! boss fight scenario where you have to move the analog sticks and do quick attacks with some certain quick time events which is actually satisfying in some ways. However, if you screw up around those lichens, they will give you a gory death that's like like really a comparison to horror films when the gore comes out of the throat. It's really good. <laughs> Um, now back to the gameplay, this is where the order starts to fall down really fast. For example, um, there's more, there's not that much gameplay like I said, and it kind of makes for a game that doesn't really feel like there's that much weight to it. Heavy Rain, maybe people will say Heavy Rain, what about that? That didn't have gameplay, 
but they weren't making it a third-person shooter. They were making an interactive storyline with multiple characters to be able to control and multiple stories for you to figure out and make your own ending. That was what Heavy Rain was going for. The Order tries to go for a game that wants to be a, ga a game, but also wants to be a film at the same time. But games like Uncharted, Bioshock Infinite, or The Last of Us has done it pitch perfectly. But The Order 1886 does not know what it's doing. Does it want to have full game immersion like Heavy Rain? Or does it want to be an Uncharted um, shooter with movie quality moments? But the problem is they take the movie quality too far with what they showed us was a lot of third person action. It was kind of the hype behind it that kind of ruins the final product. And I must also talk about the chapter layout. It is stupid, it is unbalanced, and it is just annoying as hell. For example, the, uh, the first level will take you around at least an hour to be, while the second level can take you a total of 5 to 10 minutes because it's a cutscene. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys the chapter of the game. So, right here is the bro world. It's not that, it's just kind of like 10 minutes long, the prologue, which is a good, it's not the bad prologue. And this is like level 1, chapter 1. Ah, it's a good level. I mean, extend itself long, you meet characters, and you go on a chase here and there. Then the second level is just a cut, two cutscenes, two scenarios. This is a cutscene. This is basically you just walk to a location, touch an object, game over. Next is a long chapter with some great sequences of action. Another great show. Action, action, cutscene, move an object around, and then cutscene, 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 action, full of intense action, another intense action, then cutscene, cutscene, action, cutscene, 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 action, action, cutscene, action, cutscene. Basically, 10 levels of this game, maybe even less, Ryan, though, are full of gameplay moments. Gameplay. The other levels, like this one, is full of cutscenes. There's no action in some of these levels. Are you kidding me? You call this a chapter? That's not a chapter. That's like a setup to a freaking chapter. Seriously. I mean, I, I feel like the layout of the chapter selection screen here is botched. It is like it's not a horrible chapter layout scene. I mean, it gives us every scenario the characters go through in that level. But seriously, you call this a chapter? This level, chapter two, can be in in five minutes. And that's like not even. Uh, that's counting cutscene. This one can be in in like ten minutes. Cutscene, cutscene, cutscene. Um, no, this is, this is like less than five minutes, this chapter. Chapter 10, confrontations can take you less than five minutes to beat. Because you're not doing anything. Not even touching a button. Same thing here, chapter 12. Cutscene. Take you five minutes to beat. Again. This will take you five minutes precisely because there's, it, it extends this cutscene out way too long. This will take you like five minutes, maybe six minutes, this level. This will take you like probably 10 to 20 minutes because this part's all cutscene and then this part's all action and gameplay. Then cutscene, and then last man standing is a boss battle with another cutscene at the end. It just feels like the developers don't really understand how to do a chapter selection screen system and basically how to set up the chapters precisely. I mean, it feels odd and it really is disjointed. Or, like, for like example, um, chapter 10, which I remember real easily, is a cutscene only. Just like a two minute cutscene, and then you skip to chapter 11, which takes you a half an hour to complete. It is really stupid that for some reason the developers think a cutscene equals as a level or a chapter. It does not equal a level, it equals just a cutscene. I mean, the game is cut up into scenes and chapters, but I wish there was more actual substance rather than style. I mean, the game goes style over substance, you know? It's kind of like quality over quantity type of thing. But quality here is high quality, but there's not that But quantity is about, about how much a gameplay there is. That's kind of how it feels. Um, like I said, the balance, it's unbalancing layout of chapters leaves you with at least like 16 chapters in the game entirely. 
and f at least like five of them are cutscenes only, which is a real shame, as those levels with the action in it are awesome. They have great moments of shootouts and explosions and scenarios like that, but it just doesn't feel satisfying. Also, the pacing at the beginning is kind of slow. It isn't sluggish or the worst pacing ever in a game, but it did take its time as it always limited your control, taking you taking the control away from you, or basically not allowing you to do certain button prompts. Like you can't sprint within the first five minutes of the game or the first thirty minutes of the game. You can't like pull out your gun whenever you want to. It takes control away from you, which is a really pissing me off type of scenario. Um, and what's it, 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 it means it the biggest problem with this game is it, it's more of like what people said is that it basically is um, what people told me about the game is that it's more of a game that takes its looks away too much and takes the game less. It's more of the, here's another way to say it. the order 1886 sacrifices the gameplay for a more cinematic experience. And let's say a cinematic experience doesn't even end well. This ending is downright abrupt and weak, in my personal opinion. I have my notes right here, it says it itself. It's weak and, and abrupt, seriously. There's loose ends all over the place with the ending, and there's not even a full, like, for conclusion for your character and the characters around that affected Sir Galahad. And it's the journey. It feels like the journey was just, like, halfway. It was like, it was like a story that I was expanding years. But the developer says, fuck it, cut it in half, make the other part a sequel. As the game tries to do a sequel bait with an epilogue type of uh, level, but it's not really a level, it's a cutscene. It's like a minute long. And it just feels kind of abrupt, and I just wanted more. And it's a shame, as the game is like 6 to 8 hours long. And, it, I mean, I beat it in 7 hours on normal difficulty. On 8 hours, it's like hard difficulty, and easy can take you 5 to 6. Is that like really what you want for a six dollar price tag? It's all up to you. However, for most people, it won't be really that worth sixty bucks, as I might personally think about it. Um, overall, it just I just feel like the order just does not deliver on what it wanted to be. It, tr it, I mean, yes, it's crazy ambitious. It's highly cinematic, but it's way too ambitious. And it is way too many cinematic quality that the developers forgot that there also has to be gameplay. There's not even online features. There's nothing else to do when the game ends. After its end, you can go back and get all the collectibles and find the Sackboy Easter egg. But that's it. There's no online multiplayer, there's no online co-op, no offline co-op, no special features. It's just the same game, same campaign levels over and over again, suffering from the odd pacing, it's disappointing ending, it's great story and some great gameplay with some beautiful quality, it's disappointing and horrid chapter layout. It all leads up for a game that's really unbalanced and doesn't deliver on all its promises. I'm sorry. But the Order 18X deserved more. It's, the, the, the customers who bought this, including me, deserved more of a game. While people say length doesn't matter, for me, sometimes it feels justified. And sometimes it just doesn't. It just gets me angry. But overall, the Order 18X does not 
satisfy on most ends. But saying that though, it's not a game that you should not buy. I still say check it out at some point. $60? Maybe. I don't know. If you really need to play it over and over, you're going to get 100% of trophies. But if it's like a 50 or 40 bucks, I recommend it. I mean, I don't say like wait till it's 20 bucks. Because this game still has some great quality to it, and maybe if you return it, you might get some good money back. But overall, the Order 186 it does not satisfy on all marks. What the hell that up? There you go. So, that's like the ending of this video, and the final verdict for the Order 1886 is a dis is not a low. I'm not gonna give go low low like some people would say. But I really wanted to give this game an 8. But after talking with the camera, which is you guys, I realized that I can't give that game that score. And overall, I'm just going to have to give it a good old 7 out of 10. It's not a recommendation, but, it is, it's, but it's not saying you shouldn't buy the game at some point. It is working up, worth picking up at some point because of the quality of the game and just basically how it plays. If you really don't want to buy the game, or if you really felt like the game, if you really was one of the people saying that the Order 86 is not like a good game, then maybe you should just stay away and buy it at a lower price point, just so you can feel satisfied with it. But at the end of the day, you will know you're not going to be. So that's it for this video, guys. Until, um, I'll see you guys on the next episode of Video Like 1907. Please like this video, comment below, and subscribe. Also, share this video. It also helps me out. Share this with your buddies on Facebook, share this with your buddies on Twitter. Share this everywhere you have, like LinkedIn, Google, Twitter, Instagram, Vine, whatever there, whatever there is. I don't know, I'm losing count. Um, follow me on Facebook as Michael Martinez. Follow me on Twitter as TheMichaelLuntine1997. 1997 and more videos will be coming soon, guys, okay? So I'll see you guys on the next episode of The Michael M. 1997. Alright? Bye-bye.